Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Ndi Naija. How are you all doing? Okay. Excuse the jankiness of this. This is a little bit of a different video from some of what I do, but because one of the things I wanted to present to you all in my channel was immigration, here we have one of the most common immigration forms that folks complete once in these United States. <clears throat> excuse me, excuse my voice. I seem to have a little bit of a cold there. A really fast moving one. <clears throat> so this is the I-765, which is the application for employment authorization. Let's zoom in a smidge. As you can see at the top here, it is the application for employment authorization and approval of this form gives you an employment authorization document, an EAD or a I-766, the next number after that. This is an I-765, by the way. So a lot of people are very apprehensive in completing immigration forms and it is a very serious business. A very serious matter so when you are completing these forms please be careful and diligent to ensure you have all the information necessary and that you complete it properly first off if you were submitting this form you cannot submit it janky as it is because I mean look at that so it's a little bit wonky but in order to save the trees, I couldn't print this again. This form is seven pages. I printed it front, front and back just for ease of the video. But if you were to complete this form to submit to the Department of Homeland Security, you would print it out one, one on one page or per page. So I printed it double-sided you would not print it double-sided you would print just one sheet per page when you're completing this form the instructions tell you to use either black or blue pen please don't use a red pen or other colored pens that's not necessary <clears throat> you could also complete this on the computer if you have Adobe Acrobat I have tried using blue beam to complete this and it was not it, it didn't work as well something about the technology in the form but it's something that you can complete on the computer and then print out and review so typically if you are going to fill this you already have some sort of immigration benefit already perhaps you are a DACA recipient or you are a student in the United States, an international student, and if you are, you would have one of these, which is an I-20, Certificate of Eligibility for Non-Immigrant Student Status. If you have one of these, when you are filling or completing this form, well, let's, let's do this again. So if you have one of these, you are an international student. Now, if you want to get an internship or a co-op in the United States while you are enrolled as a student, you would use this. And the benefit you would obtain would be curricular practical training. So you would receive a card that says you are eligible to work in the United States for a period of time. If you have graduated and you have this, you have 12 months optional practical training, OPT. So if you are completing this after you have graduated, you will get a form that gives you one year to work in the United States, and that's timed. However, if you are in the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, <clears throat> I don't recall what the M is for. If it's it's either engineer, it's either ma mathematics or management. I doubt that it's management. 
But if you are in the STEM field, you are given 24 months or two years after graduation to work in the United States. The United States has been, at least in the past, big on technology and the sciences, and they don't want to lose the best and the brightest. So let's see about completing this form. You would leave this part out. I mean, first of all, read it. It says for USCIS only, and that's the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. <clears throat> if you have an attorney, the attorney would complete the whole form for you, but it would be cheaper to not use an attorney. You do have to be careful. So let's say I was filling this out for Joe Blow, and if you need help with any of this, I'm not an immigration attorney, but you could email me at ndinaija at gmail.com. So let's say Joe Blow is in his final year of, let's, uh, let's say he's a junior, so he's in his third year of college and he wants to get an internship with IBM or some form or some company like that. If this was his first internship, he would click that, initial permission to accept employment. He would put his full name here, last name, Blow, first name, Joe, and mi middle name, Curtis. <clears throat> Don't laugh. If he had other names used, like Derek, or Drake, I don't know, I'm just writing names in here. That's unimportant. Page two, US mailing address. If you live with a family member, write their in care of name here, street number, and the street name. Let's say one, two, three, four, main street. apartment number, suite, floor, all of that in there, city, town, zip code, and so on. If the physical, if the mailing address is different from the physical address, you write the physical address in here. Alien registration number. Now, if you do not already have, if you do not already have an employment authorization document, you would not have an A number. If you have had an, an authorization document, first of all, you would be clicking this box to renew your permission to accept employment, which is if you're doing it after school or if you are at the beginning of other immigration journeys, say a K-1 or an uh, IR-5 and different things. So that that would that would be in there you would see an a number on the card that you're given and you would write that number in there if you have an online account with the USCIS you would put it there Joe Blow is male he's single and he has not previously completed the I-765 also means the Social Security Administration has not given him an official Social Security number if they had he would have it here and there are some categories of students, F1 students, who do have social security numbers because that's how an employer is able to pay you. And if you want a social security card, you would complete that. And if you hit no on that, you would go down to number 18, down here. This information is in here because this is the inf this information is also in the social security form when you're completing it so you just might as well if you do want a social security card and then you would put your countries of citizenship and nationality part three place of birth list the city town or village province and country in which you were born now this is self-explanatory 
but if you're some some this question can be confusing depending on where you're from if you're from if you're somebody like me who's from Nigeria and you there are multiple places in here you would write you can choose one and give an explanation at the back so this is where you put additional information and you could write what what this is here so if you were explaining your city town or village of birth if your city if your area or your locale is a sub city or a sub town you would write the form information here so that would be part two question 19a so you put the page number part two and the item number that would be 19a and then you would write a little explanation this would also work if you're explaining a difference in name a different just any anything that needs to be explained so if you've been going by Ngozi all these years and on your baptismal certificate and your school certificate it says something else and your passport is in the name that you answer now which is Ngozi you would write that explanation there and give proof so just remember that anything you write you need to be able to give proof of it that's the basic premise for anything that you're submitting to the Department of Homeland Security your I-94 these days they don't give physical I-94s so you would go online put your passport number and your date of birth and you would get your I-94 arrival and departure record that's a good thing to print out and have in your possession passport number of your most recently issued passport and if you already have this well those two don't really have anything to do with each other if you if you have a passport you would put the number in there travel document number if any this would be your visa number or if you had this i-765 before and it and you were eligible to travel which means you submitted an I-131 along with this form initially. So you would write that number there. The country that issued your passport or travel document. And sometimes these can be different for the same country. So you would just write the information there. Date of your last arrival into the United States. You don't have to be exact. You could put the estimate if you don't know the exact date but it would be good to remember and to see if you can find out if you arrived any time after hmm, I forget but most of the these days you can find the date of your last arrival from your I-94 arrival and departure record because it is online at the Department of State's website you would just click you would just do a Google search for I-94 arrival and you would get a link to where the website is do not pay to try and get access to any of this information it's free when you put your information in and now you have expiration date for your travel document passport place of last arrival and your immigration status on last arrival so if you were a visitor and you wanted to go to school here you've been accepted into school which means you now have this you have to have this <clears throat> so if you were a visitor when you first arrived to the United States and you changed status to become an F1 student you would have submitted an I-593 to do the conversion now you want to work you would still put the B2 visitor because that was your initial entry into these United States see this number that's the number on here and that only that only applies if you were an F1 student when you arrived and more information about your eligibility category so you see it here this is the 
C3C STEM OPT category. If you were still in college, it would be C3B, which would be curricular practical training. If you were applying as a relative of someone in the United States, it should be C9. But there are different categories and you would just, you know, look at look at the instructions to see where you fall under and you would put those numbers in there. So again, if you were a student and you had graduated, you would put the degree that you graduated with, especially if you're coming from here, in here. Or if you're not and you are the regular um if you're a regular graduate, not from a STEM major, you just put your degree there and the employer who has promised to employ you. And you continue there. Most of the information there is about your eligibility categories. Applicant statement, contact information, declaration, blah, blah, blah. So you would fill that out your phone number, mobile number, and your email address. You would certify that you can read and understand English. Definitely, generally, if you attended college in the United States, you know how to uh, read and understand English, hopefully. If you do not, there is a place here for an interpreter. And here is where you declared that you've reviewed all the information and you sign. Now this form, this is page four, and this is information on the interpreter's mailing address, contact information, and their certification. If someone else were preparing this form for you, if it's a lawyer or whatnot, they would put this here. You could have someone who is not a lawyer prepare this for you, and they would put their information on here. They would sign, well, they would say they if they were not an attorney, if they're an attorney, they would click this box. And this is their certification under the penalty of perjury. And sign and date. Here is any additional information. Say you had two last names and you go by one, or one is on one document and a different one is on another document, you would put your explanations in here. And that's about that. So I hope this has been helpful. If you guys have any information, you can leave a comment down below or you could email me for a small fee. For a small, small fee. You could email me if you have any questions. I am glad to help and also direct you to websites which can help you. If there are any other forms that you were, you had questions about, you could also email me. And this is the first form, but I am going to go through other forms at a later date. So thank you very much for watching. If this is your first time, please subscribe, like the video, and turn on notifications or accept alerts. I appreciate you for watching. Thank you. Bye.